Welcome to Course 2, Unit 5, Lesson 3, Cash Flow Statement Examples. In this lesson, we're going to use four different companies to demonstrate what a cash flow statement looks like and how it might be used. So let's get started. Okay, on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm going to leave up the uh, slide from the very last lesson that we just did. Um, just to remind you that the operating activities are what we're looking to be in the green and the investing and financing activities on the cash flow statement is what we want to see in the red. So let's go ahead and pull up um, a good example of a cash flow statement. And I'm going to pull up Walmart in order to demonstrate that. So the ticker for Walmart, and I'm, just so you know, I'm on MSN Money, and I'm pulling up Walmart, which is the ticker for that is WMT. And I'm going to hit Enter. And you can see it brings up the uh, all the different information for Walmart. Now re remember, all this information, all these numbers that you're seeing generated onto this page are all extracted from the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. So those three documents are providing all this information. So in order to go to the cash flow statement, we're going to come down to the bottom under the financials where you see the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement listed. So we're going to go ahead and click on the cash flow statement. And as the cash flow statement comes up, you'll see that you have the option to look at the annual cash flow statement or the interim cash flow statement. And all you got to do is just click that button right there and it'll take you between the two. This one goes by quarter. So every three months, this is the information. If you just want to look at the annual, which is every year, you click on the annual. And that's what we're just going to use to generically look at this cash flow statement. So when you look at the statement, it has a whole lot more numbers than what I demonstrated over here on the left-hand side of the screen. But the premise of this sheet is exactly the same. As you look at the first bold line of information, you'll see it says cash from operating activity. So that's our operating activity line. So as we look at this, we can see that the numbers are fairly profound for uh, Walmart. And these numbers are in millions. So that's $20.6 20 billion, $20 billion. The next year is $23.1 billion. And up to 2012 is $24.2 billion. Okay? So that's all the money that's flowing into Walmart. That's how much they're generating per year for their operating uh, activities. Now, as we look down to the next uh, bold line, which is cash from investing activities, this is where we want to see the negative numbers because this is where Walmart is taking that money and they're either investing it in more supplies, they're investing it in more stores, they're investing in it maybe in other businesses, um, but that's that's what this number represents. So when we look at the 2008 number where they generated $20.6 billion, we then go down to the next segment here, which is the investing activities, and we can see that Walmart invested $15.6 billion of that $20.6 $20 billion. So that's a substantial portion of that money is being put directly back into the business as investing. Now, as we look into 2012, we can see that they generated $24.2 billion and they invested $16.6 billion right here. Okay, So the last line is their financing activities. So let's look at what Walmart was doing in the finance uh, department here. So when we go down here, you can see where it says cash from financing activities. So let's go look at the 2008 number. Um, Walmart was paying off $7.4 billion. So let's see how they were doing that. Now, this is where you can drill down and look at the individual lines that make up that financing activity. So $3.5 billion of that financing act activity went to paying dividends. Okay, see how it says total cash dividends paid. Since that's a negative number, that's the money flowing out of the business to the shareholders and the shareholders received $3.5 billion in dividend payments. The next number is the retirement of stock. That's issuance or retirement of stock. When you see a negative number, that means Walmart is buying back their shares. They're not issuing them. They're buying them back. So that's a really good thing as a shareholder. If you're holding shares of this company, Walmart's buying back shares, making your the shares that you're holding more valuable. Okay? So $7.6 billion was spent by Walmart buying back their own shares, which is a great thing if you're a shareholder. So, um, and you can see that those trends continued uh, through the next five years. Uh, when you look at that financing activity, it was always a negative number throughout all five years. 
So when you look at the net change in cash, you can see that it changed by negative $2 billion here, positive 1.7, positive 0 0.6, negative 0.5, and negative 0.8. Um, when you look down here at the bottom of the cash flow statement, now this isn't something that I taught in the previous lesson, but when you look down here at the, at the bottom of the cash flow statement, it shows you what the cash, the total cash was at the beginning and the end of that term. So you can see that Walmart has been sitting on $5.5 billion in cash, 7.2, 7.9, 7.3, and 6.5. So generally, Walmart's been keeping about $7 billion in cash in hand so that they have that for their rainy day fund or for, the, for them to be able to acquire another company or whatever they plan on using that money for. It's kind of like you having money in, in, a, in a checking account that you can use for that rainy day or if you would need it for emergency money. And that's what that is for Walmart. So this is a very strong cash flow statement. Now, whether we're going to actually invest in a company like this, you'd have to go in and dig to the uh, income statement and the balance sheet and figure out how much their, you know, their equity has been growing. And all those things that we learned from Unit 3 of Course 2, um, that's, that's how you would assess what this company's worth. What I'm showing you here with the cash flow statement is to show you the health of the company and whether it's trending in the right direction. And for this company, it's absolutely trending in the right direction, and they're showing all positive signs. So I just showed you a, uh, a great-looking cash flow statement. So let me pull up one that doesn't look nearly as good. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to use uh, Sears, uh, Sears Holding Company. So uh, their ticker is SHLD. We'll hit enter. And just like that, uh, Walmart, we're going to go down on the Sears Holding Company. Okay, and we're going to click on the cash flow statement. Okay, and we'll, we'll just look at the uh, annual cash flow statement. And we're going to do the, the next three kind of fast because I spent so much time on the Walmart one. So as we look at this uh, cash flow statement, we'll start off with, by looking at the operating activities. This is where we need to see the really strong positive number in growth. So when we look at 2008, it was 1.5 billion, then it was 0.9, then 1.5, then it was 0.1 billion, and then in 2012, it's actually a negative number. So the trend on that operating activities is, is horrible. That's the exact opposite of how you wanna see a company trending. Now, when we go down to the uh, cash for the investing activities, you'll see that it's negative uh, 0.4, negative 6, point, I'm sorry, negative 0.6, negative 0.1, negative 0.4, and negative 0.3. You can see that it's, it's kind of remained neutral, and they've been investing in pretty much the same thing, which is probably their inventory. Um, and so that's, you know, that's a fairly standard number. Now, when we go down to the financing activity, you'll see that back in 2008, they were paying off a lot of, uh, they were actually buying a lot of stock back in 2008, and then that slowly started to decline, and they're actually incurring debt at this point. There's, there's $1 billion of debt, there's $0.3 billion of debt that they're taking on, okay? So you can see that that number is trending in the wrong direction. So when we look at uh, Sears, you can see that this, this is a company that's probably going through some difficult times right now. Um, I'm sure if we looked at the balance sheet and the income statement, we'd see very similar things. Uh, but based off of the, this cash flow statement, this is not something that you would really want to actively look at. So let's go ahead and look at another good company. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up Intel. Um, it's INTC. And when we pull up Intel, we'll go down to the bottom and look at the cash flow statement. And you can see, uh, looking at the operating activities, it goes from 12 billion, 10, 11, 16, 20 billion. That's nice positive growth on the operating activities. When we go down and look at the investing activities, it's negative 9, negative 5, negative 7, negative 10, negative 10. So here's a real consistent investing activity within uh, Intel. They're using a lot of that capital that they're uh, producing to invest back in the business and also buying other types of assets. Um, and then when we look at the financing activity, it is, it is growing tremendously in the fact that they are buying back all kinds of shares. When we look here at the 2011 numbers, you can see that they bought back $12 billion worth of their shares. And that's a great thing as a shareholder for the company to be buying back that many shares. I would personally prefer dividends, but uh, <laughs> this is another method for them to uh, put more money in your pocket.
So let's go ahead and pull up uh, the, the last company, which uh, has a bad cash flow statement, and that's going to be Kodak. So the ticker for Kodak is EKDKQ, and it's actually Eastman Kodak. So we'll go ahead and pull that up. And as I'm sure you probably heard, uh, Kodak's going through some really rough times. They're going to be filing for bankruptcy here shortly. So this will be a, an, an example of a really poor cash flow statement. So let's go ahead and click on cash flow. And as we look at the numbers here, you can see that they are all trending on the operational activities um, in, a, in a negative direction. This is not what you want to find whenever you're looking at a business. Um, the investing activities are completely fizzling out. Um, you can see that they, they sold a lot of their assets here in 2007. And the, the following year, you can see how the net income went negative right there. So you, you could have known something was up right there. Um, in 2007, whenever they started selling all their assets, that was that's a real good sign right there that things were going sour back in 2007. Um, then, when we go down to the financing activities, you can see that the the positive number here is really bad because that means they're just taking on a bunch of debt. 